Good evening, this is Amos Tarfa. I just want to make a quick video going over uh, the expectations in science as we go into uh, more and more into the second semester. So we have students mostly in physical science, chemistry, and general science. Those are the three major branches. Uh, we do have a few people that are doing physics in addition to their chemistry, which is great. That's fine. That's not required, but I just want you to be aware of that. Um, that's only uh, basically one day a week, though. That's like a Friday thing. So let's go over um, some of the goals. When we're doing our science for the rest of this semester, here's what I would recommend. Um, if you are comfortable in the science class you're in, so in chemistry or physical science especially, this applies to you. If you're in general science, it's a little different because you're going through different systems of the body. You're learning um, you know, D about DNA. And, and that's a class that is open to people who might feel like physical science is too intense right now. If you want to go hang out with general science, that's fine. You still can do physical science later. It's not, you finish the chemistry section, you could do the physics section of physical science at any time. Um, however, I want you to try this first, though, before you make any switch. So the first step is um, you take a chapter that you're working on, for example, right? I have a, a book here I'm going to use as an example. And it's one chapter, right? So let's say this week I'm working on chapter 11. So I would read the chapter. So that's number one. So I would read the chapter and take notes. Now, note taking, uh, the, the skill of taking notes is something that we should seek to grow in. So as you're reading, what are some key definitions? Write those out in your notebook, write the definitions. Write down any formulas, relevant formulas, in your notebook as well. Keep your notes neat, write the date, write the topic, write, okay, here's a definition. It's bold in my book. I'm gonna write that out here. Here's a scientist that did something. Let me write down what they did. Here's an occupation I'm reading about. I'm gonna write it here. This applies to chemistry and physical science. Please, let's take good notes as we read through the chapter. That's step one. This right here is one level of success. Just reading through, taking notes, keeping track of my definitions, I'm putting them in the notebook, practicing uh, how well I can define those terms, right? For example, photosynthesis. What is photosynthesis? You write that definition down. And the goal is to make sure you're comfortable explaining that to somebody else. So, number one, we read. Number two, you want to have the PowerPoints that I sent out. I sent these PowerPoints out weeks ago, and I'm going to send them out again. But they're all in a Google folder. And basically, you have access to all the PowerPoints with all the section review answers and all the keywords that you should be paying attention to. So, have those PowerPoints handy. That's number two now. So you've read through a section or you've read through the chapter or you're, and you're working through the section review questions. Have the PowerPoint nearby so that if you work through a question or if you're not sure of what they mean by a question, it's right there in the PowerPoint. The answer is right there for you. Now, somebody might say, well, aren't people going to cheat and just write that as their answer for the section reviews? Well, that's where we have the quizzes, right, and the tests. Those quizzes and tests will help check if you actually mastered the content or if you just wrote out answers to problems without understanding. So it's important that, yes, you have good PowerPoints. It's important to use them as a guide, but don't allow it to become something that hinders you from seeking to master the content. So number one, we read the chapter, right? Write down the terms. You might not understand everything. That's okay. Number two, go to the section review questions and use it as a guide as you go through the um, the, the, the PowerPoints as a tool. So basically, try the section review questions, as many as you can. The section review questions are the ones that are found in the, in the chapter you're reading, not at the end of the chapter. That's different. So try the section review questions, and then use the PowerPoints as a guide. You know, Maybe you look at number four from section review 11a, uh, and you realize, oh, that's what they want? That's easy. But you might get some questions that you're like, I don't understand this. I mean, I think the, I see the answer they're giving, but I don't understand it. So that, come, that brings us to number three. What if I don't understand a question even after using the section review? In that case, what you want to do now is take, make, make a, you know, a note of those questions. Or take note of those questions. So take note of those questions and email your teacher. Email teacher or put an asterisk, right? Put an asterisk. And whenever there's a discussion in class and, and, and the teacher says, are there any questions? Then you could say, yeah, I was working through those problems and I don't know how to do 11-4 even though I looked at the PowerPoint and I'm still not sure about it. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with asking questions. 
But here's the key, though. Step one, do we have good notes, right? Step two, have we reviewed the PowerPoints? And then we pull out number three here. The reason why this is important is because you don't want to allow one question to make you feel like you can't finish the rest of the chapter. You want to, first of all, get an overview of the chapter as best as you can, try looking through those PowerPoints, and then ask questions as they come up. If, uh, and I want to just give a word of encouragement to the students. Whenever something is due, um, and if you don't know how to do that thing, then email is always good, right? You can email, you can, um, you can ask right in class on the Monday, Thursdays especially. But I would say that you don't want to wait till you're asked for it, right? So let, let me just give you this quick real life example. So something is due on Thursday. Um, on Thursday, your teacher says, hey, everybody turn this in. And then you're like, oh, I have questions. Well, first of all, make sure you've done those steps. But if you have questions, you should have brought those questions before, right? That's the way you want to do it. Bring up the questions before it's, they ask you to turn it in. Now, if the due date passes, then that's another situation. Because now you haven't turned it in, um, that's just not a good way to do it, especially in college classes, right? Because you've passed the due date, you haven't mentioned anything, and that's not a good thing. So learn that skill. It will help you go far with just um, you know, your college classes or, or, or expectations in the work world, right? If they give you a task, hey, write a code for that thing, and you don't know how to do it, make sure you bring it up before the day when your manager says, hey, I need that code. Don't, don't say at that point, well, I don't know how to do the code. Uh, communication is good. That's what I'm trying to get at. So uh, if you have any questions on this model, let me know. As far as when I think you should try and read the chapter, um, on Mondays, we'll try to launch you into the topic, give you some key uh, terms and things to look out for. On Tuesday and Wednesday, I would say those are very important days for reading, focus, answering questions. And then on Thursday, you can actually ask questions before you turn in the work. And you can discuss it with your classmates. Like, there's nothing wrong with asking your classmate, hey, I was doing number five, what do you think of this? Those are great conversations, right? That's better than small talk asking them about what the baseball game was like yesterday. Nothing wrong with baseball, but what I'm trying to say, um, even though I personally don't watch baseball, but, but you get the point. You, you, you should ask people, have conversations about problems, wrestle together with your classmates in terms of, like, hey, I think this problem should be this, and they might have a different view. You guys can dissect it, look at the PowerPoint. Now we're talking. That's what good use of time would look like with conversations that matter with your classmates. Um, I want to make sure I'm not forgetting anything else, but basically by Thursday, at the end of the day on Thursday, you should be all done with the homework for that week. And you can turn it in either electronically or you can turn in the paper copy. So that gives you Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And then on Friday, it's more of a buffer. Um, or for some people, that's when you do physics. So plan to make the most of your Tuesday and Wednesday science study time, reading hard, taking notes, and I look forward to seeing those notes for that module. So when you ask a question, I'll always generally go back to, can I see your notes? So make sure you take good notes for science. Um, I'll make other videos for other updates, but that's the plan. Next week, chemistry students are working through module 10, but module 10 has to do, or chapter 10 has to do with like, um, what, what, what did we call it there? Uh, balancing chemical equations, basic equations, and then for physical science, they're working through chapter 12, uh, which is, again, continuing with the physics. If you're not comfortable with either of those classes and you want to be in more of a general science class, uh, that some of our students are using apology at general science. And you could do that. That's fine. Um, just let me know and we can transition. When we have those three classrooms uh, set up uh, uh, starting next week, let me know and you can go to the appropriate class. Thank you for your time. Sorry this went a little long, but I just wanted to make sure we're all on the same page in terms of expectations for science. Have a blessed day.